welcome back to Show Me How to Win. We're visiting PAX East 2020 and we're visiting the Tokyo Series booth. Next to me is Jordan Draper. He is the designer, like the founder of the company of everything Tokyo Series. So I cannot wait to find out about his story, his inspirations mm -hmm. and everything. I played the Tokyo Series, uh, Tokyo Metro. Uh -huh. That's the first one I play. So I know it's a tiny game, but tiny box with a lot of game in it. And uh, I am really impressed by it, actually, the first time I played it. I, I was expecting like a little, because game from Japan usually is not very, uh, yeah, not very, um, should I say, complex. They, they have a style of games they like. But when I played it, I was like, okay, really impressed by it. And then I found out it's not a Japanese designer, so. <laughs> All right, so tell us the story behind the Tokyo, Tokyo series. Yeah, so the Tokyo series was originally concepted to showcase uh, subcultures within Japan. So living in Tokyo I got inspired by the vending machines and by going in and seeing how efficient the subway was and by residential architecture, lots of different things. So I decided to make a series of 12 games that encapsulated all of that and then you can mix and match them together so you can start uh, getting into other overlaps within those subcultures. Um, so that was the inspiration originally and then I launched the first three on Kickstarter and decided I'll release three every single year. So we have six out of the 12 now um, and that's where it all started. Uh, for the Tokyo series itself, and then I was making some games before that as well. Um, and a little bit more on my backstory, I have basically been nomadic for the past nine years. Um, so I'll live somewhere for like three to six months at a time usually, and then I'll jump back and forth to go to conventions, uh, doing artist residencies, I just did one in London. Uh, and that lifestyle has been really fun for me to see new environments and change and to get inspired by design as well. Uh, and I think living in Tokyo, especially with Tokyo Game Market, has been a really good way to find uh, just uniqueness within board games because with the market out here with Euro games and with a lot of these bigger box games, uh, there's a lot of similarity in the themes and everything and also in the mechanics and then going to Japan and seeing people who are just hand making these little games has been a great inspiration for me to make some small boxes and to put a lot of game and like almost mix the cultures of the two. Right. Um, you were mentioning how Tokyo Game Market, it's really a different market. I've heard that uh, there was a guy who basically handmade like 12 games and each game is about like 100 US and then he just goes, he sells them out and then that's it. It really is like a flea market in a sense, right? Yeah, it definitely feels like that. I'd say, I mean, there's probably a thousand publishers or something that go in there, but they're, they're just not really publishers. They're just people who are doing it for fun, a lot of them, and they're coming in and they're passionate about what they're making, which is really cool because you go in and get something handmade and you already have this connection with it because it feels very organic and it feels very personal to the person that's making it. And that's where I kind of founded my brand as well. I wanted it to feel like you're buying something from my personal experience that I've handcrafted more so than it being a bigger uh, umbrella company or something. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So um, th I would say you agree your most well-known game is Tokyo Metro, right? It's one of the most well-known for sure. Well yeah. For me, is the one that I know. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so uh, but for those people who have not played Tokyo Metro, which is the game we're going to be discussing today, can you give uh, people a little quick intro how to play? Yeah. So Tokyo Metro is a game where you are expanding the Tokyo Metro system. Uh, traditionally, the Tokyo Metro system was built by uh, individual companies, right. right? So it wasn't the government that was Very doing different. it for public reasons, right? It was There was actually a capitalistic investment behind it, uh, which is cool because in the game you get to mimic that a little bit. So you're moving around on this map uh, through a worker placement system. Basically, you have worker placement cards, they cycle out every round, and you can take certain actions for that round. So you move around on the actual map of the Tokyo Metro system, which is cool because you can learn about it. Uh, and when you get in proximity of where a station could be built, you can take an action and pay some money to build the station there. So you're both building up the infrastructure of stations on the map, and then you can also buy stocks and invest in train lines, uh, which move at the end of each round. And when they hit stations, you get a payout if you own the station, or your stock investment value goes up, which pays out at the end of the game. So there's a lot of cross-investment and things, um, and that's like an overview of how you can play. Um, I think it's uh, safe to say it's action selection and stock holding, right? Yeah, those are two of the big uh, parts of the game and then there's some nuances and efficiencies within that system. All right, so, uh, but it's about the Tokyo Metro and the components you play not on a board but on a handkerchief. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's quite a handkerchief. Fabric, fabric. Yeah, 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 a fabric map. That's good. I like handkerchief. I'll start saying that. Um, but yeah, it's all fabric. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to fit in the box. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, when I play my friend uh, Jennifer's copy, she's a big fan of your uh, series. She actually has a plexiglass and she put it on top so we can play. Yeah, yeah she deluxified it. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get into strategy. Now, at its heart, it's an economic stock, stock holding game. At the beginning, the actions are important, but towards the end, it really is all about making money. So let's talk about some of the strategies. What do you recommend folks do at the beginning of the game? Yeah. So one of the earliest mistakes you can make is running out of money too quickly. It's really easy to overspend, and then it's hard to make a comeback. You have to take out loans, and there's a heavy interest rate for that. So Money's tight. Money is very tight, which is what makes the game interesting. Because if you could just spend a bunch of money and get all the stocks, it wouldn't be that difficult, right? Um, it's really important to get stocks in the game. It is a stock holding game. And the first person to get the stock gets a much bigger cut at the end of the game than everybody else who gets in on that stock. So trying to foresee which lines you think are going to be built is an important step. The other thing is you need to get income as the game is going on. So in the beginning, if you can get maybe one or two stations to just get a little income from somebody else's train line as well, it can be useful to get uh, some leverage to go over the top of that. Last thing is there's action discs and you can get more of them. So I would recommend getting extra action discs early in the game so that you have that efficiency the whole rest of the time because you can upgrade during any of the rounds, but if you wait too long, you haven't really taken those extra actions. Right, those uh, the, lo the little discs are like your workers, so having extra disc is like having extra workers and we all know that's super important in worker placement games. Exactly, yeah. Right. Okay, so now we're, we played a few rounds and we can kind of see where things are going and one person's getting a lot of money. How do we, how do we attack that person? <laughs> Yeah, this is a great question. I mean, this is <laughs> the, so the game. The game can have some runaway leaders, but I added an extra action in there just to deal with this, which is called the speculate action, and it's probably the hardest thing to wrap your head around for when is the right time to use it. You can only do it twice during the game, but basically what it lets you do is leverage money as a bet against an actual train line, and then at the end of the game, you can take up to 30% of their profits from them before the rest of the stock owners get paid out. So you essentially become like a stock owner, but you're just taking money before all the stock owners get paid. Uh, that's a really important way to cut money out from the leader, uh, but the timing is important and you have to leverage your own cash and you can't use it for the rest of the game. So you need to have enough investment to do that. Um, that's one way to cut out the leader, and then another way is to snag some stocks from a line before they manage to get it. So somebody's building a bunch of stations on a line and you can see that they're probably going to buy the stock. Hurry and grab that first stock, and then you've got half of their investment under their feet. Okay, now what are you, you're that front runner. People are doing these things to you. They're speculating. You're like, wow, my hard work and now just suddenly does that feel so attractive. So what can you do to sort of counter that? Yeah, so another interesting thing in the game is you can get these speed tokens which speed up a train. And there's two slots per, per stock line and you can actually block speculations by putting speed tokens on there. So if you can manage to get speed tokens and make it look like you're not going to put them in a specific spot and then on your turn you hurry and put them down, nobody can speculate against you and you have this money making line, that's a pretty good way to lock in a lot of income at the end of the game. Um, another thing to do is to just start buying more stocks in new lines because even if you're only hitting a couple of stations along the way, like your investment can double or triple quite easily if you get in on stocks at the right time. So if you're doing well from maybe one or two investments, uh, I would say start diversifying and get out some other stocks. It's, an, it's a good way to at least get some in return on your investment, right? Okay, so I'm sure you played this game many times. Yeah. Do you have like a personal favorite line or personal favorite thing to do when you're playing this? And that's pretty much being pretty a, a good strategy or successful for it to you, people don't see coming. Share your personal strategy with me. You said you've never shared with this anybody before, so you're gonna give away your secret. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, actually I've never lost Tokyo Metro before, which isn't, I guess, saying that much since I designed it, but um, yeah, there's something interesting about the fact that you can look at lines and see how many stops they have right and that's how quickly they're going to go back and forth on the map so those ones are going to be more valuable um, but there's also certain stations that overlap a few of those short lines um, and if you can build those stations without spending money by trading in a bicycle for example uh, there's a there's a card that lets you do that uh, that's a very good way to get some high uh, stations get the stocks early on those lines before you start building any stations because you know that you're going to invest in those and people are probably going to build on them anyway so like the tozai line is a really good one to get. Um, it has two stops that are right next to each other uh, and you can build stations right right there in a row and it just hits them pretty quickly back and forth. And if you can speed that up and get investment early on the stock and you can get stations on that line, I mean, you're going to be pretty hard to stop at that point. So when you're doing that, what have people been doing? They just basically speculate against you? 
They'll, tr yeah, basically people will try to speculate against you or uh, they'll get in on another one of the short lines. Um, and it's hard because you have to figure out when to buy the stocks. And if you spend too much money too early, right, then you're not going to be able to build stations or it's going to be a longer process because you don't have the engine to start doing that. So this is where the game balance comes in and it's yeah. how many action discs do you want to invest in early? How many stocks do you want to invest in or do you want to build stations and get more income? Um, it's a lot of the lay of the land. There's not really a, a strategy to win Tokyo Metro because you have to see what everybody else is doing and react off of that. And also, like, what ca car comes out, really. Because some, certain, sometimes certain nations are just not available. Or you just didn't get to pick it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, because the actions are cycling out all the time, another good strategy can be to buy one of the cards. The one that gets you, like, multiple speed tokens is a great one to get, because then you'll always be able to get more speed tokens and, and trade those in to get free stations. Or you buy the trade-in station card, which lets you trade in speed tokens to build stations for free instead of paying for them. Uh, and if you have that the rest of the game, it's really powerful to just jump around and build stuff for free. Right. So extra worker, the speed token, is there another card that if, if you can, if you have the chance to buy it, get it? Um, That's it, pretty much it? Like there, there are other ones that are good, but I think they're all conditions it, depending on what the game state is. So it's hard to say that one is perfect for every example. Right, if you're trying to catch up, you want a different kind of set of actions. If you're, try, if you're the front runner, you want to speed things up. So it's all very different. Yeah, exactly. There is like a discount card that lets you put a oh, disc yeah, down and discount. then take a discount on a later action. And if you can get a good one of those early in the game and always have it, that's a pretty good one to get to. That's definitely a good one to have early. Towards the end, it's like your, your discount's not paying off because the card itself costs money. Yeah, your actions are probably worth more at the end. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Jordan, thank you so much for talking about your story, showing me the strategies. You talked about a lot. So for folks who are uh, who are fans of the series, I think this interview is actually quite interesting, interesting to them. And if you haven't tried Tokyo series yet, uh, Tokyo Metro, I definitely recommend it. It's one of the really easy to get into train games because there's a lot of them, but this one's small and it's it's not as dry, actually, in my opinion. Uh, and the tokens are really tiny, and they're really small. The cards are small. It's a handkerchief. <laughs> so it's kind of different from the regular uh, train games you will play. So I definitely recommend trying out Tokyo Metro. And thank you, Jordan, for the interview. Cool. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.